In this video, we're going to identify motion that occurs in the frontal plane during gait. It's important that you have a good understanding of the different phases of gait as we'll refer to them often throughout the video. So make sure to review the individual components of our stance phase and swing phase of gait. While there isn't the same level of activity as there is in the sagittal plane, certainly frontal plane motions are just as important to maintaining a normal gait pattern. There's three primary motions we want to look at in the frontal plane. Abduction and adduction of the hip, inversion and eversion of the foot, which will pair with supination and pronation, and finally pelvic elevation and depression or pelvic drop. Having a good understanding of how motion occurs both in an open and closed chain between the pelvis and hip is extremely important to understanding motion in the frontal plane. So let's start at the bottom of our chain and work our way up. Understanding motion in the foot is extremely important as the foot is the link between our kinetic chain and the ground. Much of what happens in the rest of the lower extremity is dependent on proper function in the foot. The primary frontal plane motion at the ankle and foot is inversion and eversion. However, it is beneficial to talk about inversion and eversion in the larger context of supination and pronation. Supination is a combination of inversion, plantar flexion, and adduction. Pronation, then, would be a combination of eversion, dorsiflexion, and abduction. Both of these motions actually include multiple planes and multiple joints. So let's follow ankle foot motion as we travel throughout the gait cycle. We'll be using our right foot here as our reference foot. And we will start with initial contact. So as we approach initial contact, our foot is in a slightly inverted or supinated position. As we move into our loading response, our foot moves into pronation. As we move into pronation, the mechanics of our foot allow it to unlock to become a mobile adapter to the surface or the ground we happen to be walking on. Our foot remains in a pronated position throughout a majority of the stance phase. However, a mobile foot is not particularly useful for propulsion. So as we move into our pre-swing phase, our foot transitions back into supination. This transition allows the foot to become a rigid lever again. With that rigid lever then, we can propel the foot forward and into our swing phase. Our ankle and foot then remain slightly supinated to prepare for initial contact with the ground again. Since inversion and eversion occur primarily at the subtalar and transverse tarsal joints, it's easiest to see from behind. As our foot moves through the stance phase, it's easy to visualize eversion occurring at the calcaneus. As we prepare to push off with our left leg, we can see the foot transitions back into an inverted or supinated position. The ability of our foot to transition from a mobile adapter into a rigid lever to be able to push from is one of the key elements of a normal gait pattern. So let's take a look at one more angle so we can follow our foot through the pronation and supination transitions. When observing gait, it's very helpful to follow the height of the arch in the foot as an indication of whether it's supinated or pronated. So watch as our right foot hits the ground how the height of the arch drops as our foot moves into pronation. As we prepare for propulsion, the foot transitions back to a rigid lever and the arch again becomes higher. Now let's take a look at the pelvis. In the frontal plane, we're most concerned with pelvic elevation or pelvic drop. Remember with a solid pelvis, if one side is up, the other side is relatively down. So here, as our right leg goes through the swing phase, we have a drop on the right side of the pelvis. As you can see then, when our left leg is in swing phase, we have a drop of the left side of the pelvis. After the initial drop of the pelvis, it elevates slightly to assist with foot clearance during mid-swing, and then drops slightly as the foot prepares to hit the ground. Let's follow the pelvis from a different view. 
a marker has been placed on the right ASIS. The green represents the path of that marker as it moves during the gate cycle. The path of the tag provides a great visualization of the rhythmical elevation and drop of the pelvis throughout gait. In addition, you can visualize the weight shift that happens as we move from leg to leg back and forth. So in observing for proper pelvic motion during gait, keep an eye out for the rhythmical elevation and drop that occurs back and forth throughout the gait cycle. When observing hip motion, it's important to remember the relationship between the pelvis and the femur in determining hip joint position. In an open chain, hip joint motion is determined by movement of the femur on the pelvis. However, 60% of our gait cycle occurs in a closed chain, so it's important to consider the relative position of the pelvis on top of the femur in a closed chain. So let's look at hip motion throughout the gait cycle. The hip starts in relative adduction and slowly transitions into an abducted position during the swing phase and then returns to adduction. So at initial contact, the angle between our femur and pelvis represents adduction. As we move through stance, our hip moves into a neutral position. As we enter the swing phase, the hip abducts slightly. The hip then transitions back towards adduction in preparation for contact with the ground again. The continual motion of both the pelvis and femur make observations of hip movement quite challenging, so repetition is the key to learning. So let's review what we've covered. At initial contact, our foot is in slight supination. It transitions to pronation to become a mobile adapter before returning to supination to become a rigid lever for propulsion. Our hip starts in adduction, immediately drops slightly into further adduction as our pelvis drops on the opposite side. It moves into slight abduction during swing before returning to its adductive position at the end of the gait cycle. At our pelvis, during stance, we get a drop on the opposite side of the pelvis followed by slight elevation to clear the foot. As we enter swing, we get a drop of the pelvis followed by slight elevation to help clear the foot of the swing leg. Observation of motion in the frontal plane can be much more challenging than that of the sagittal plane. However, it's just as important when trying to understand proper gait.